rockin' with the boys of town view. We put our spin on trending topics and school news. Thought provoking, insightful, we speak the truth. We do it for all ages, not just for the youth. Uh, listen close, you might learn something. Or laugh so hard, you split your side or something. Uh, live stream a podcast. Whenever you tune in, it's sure to be a blast. Uh, let's be honest, you don't wanna miss that. Content so real, you gonna wanna run it back. We keep you entertained while making an impact. One form and announcements, well, this is not that. Uh, sports, pop, culture, political. Whatever you like, we got you covered, bro. Uh, it's a movement more than just a show. It's KSB Elmer Radio. I'm closer to the beauty. Broadcasting live from Marvin E. Robinson School of Business and Management, Dallas, Texas. My radio station. We are KSBM Radio, the voice of Town View. Um, welcome to KSBM Radio, the voice of Town View. My name is Doc. And I'm Jojo. And today we are having a special segment of KSBM Radio. Um, this, this is going to be a full 50 minute sports segment. Uh, so for a full entire 50 minutes, we're going to talk straight sports. Um, Jojo, how are you feeling about the show today? Uh, I'm feeling very positive about it. I feel like personally, it's probably going to be the best show KSBM Radio has ever had. I agree. (laughs) I, I, I agree, man. Like, like the... The atmosphere, the atmosphere that is in this room right now is just, it is over the top. I feel, I feel amazing. Um, I'm, I'm just like so excited, uh, to, to be on the show right now. Um, so today we are just going to, today we're going to get it. We're just going to get into it guys. Okay. Um, I mean, we're not messing around. We just straight to it. We're, we're going to have fun. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, it's, we're fun. it's straight to it. <laughs> so, Jojo, um, I got to ask you a question. Okay, hit me. What are, well, I, I'll, have, I'll have you tell the people mm-hmm. what we're going to be talking about today. So, we got a lot of topics coming up. We got the Super Bowl that just happened this Sunday. You know, the, the NBA trade line went crazy, so we're going to talk about that. Um, LeBron passing Kareem and, like, what that means for his legacy. Uh, just a bunch of interesting stuff that I can't wait to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think the the energy the energy in the room is going to rile, rile up and progress as the show goes on. I think, and I really hope that our viewers across the world really like it, um, if I didn't say it before, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. It may be the morning, maybe the afternoon. You know, time is different around the world. And so, um, uh, have you heard about the basketball tournament that's going to be happening at uh, at our school? Uh, I've heard a little bit about it, but where, when is it or what's happening with it? All right, so for, for our viewers, if you're here or wherever, uh, if you want to stop by, you know, uh, the tournament will be March 9th, March, March 9th. So mark your calendars for March 9th to be at that basketball tournament uh, here at Town View, I believe. Um, it's going to be really great. Some really good competition. Um, I'm playing in it, so I just I just feel like, you know, y'all should, y'all should come out, support, uh, support your school, business, law, health, wherever. Um, and just come out and support. Um, you know, basketball is a really good sport. Basketball gets the people going. That's that's how I feel about it. So is it just gonna be law and business how it was with the volleyball tournament or that's yeah. That's that's the plan. We we might we might have some, you know, we might have some little sassy things going on. Some special guests. Yeah. I mean not not, not special in? guests, but you know, like some 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 um some uh some shifty <laughs> background players, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they they were crewing. I don't mm. know. Mm. So okay. we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, who you got? Who you I think? got us, man. Like, our team is so diverse. Um, you know, I'm on the team. 
Uh, we got a couple. We have a couple more KSBM radio members on the team. Um, I think it's gonna be really great. I think the people are gonna enjoy it. I hope all the people come out, uh, show some love. And um, yeah, I just all right, I'm I excited. Think, I think that's enough messing around. I think yeah, we we need to move on to the next topic. So all right, so let's get straight into it, what Jojo. You wanna, what you got for us today? The Super Bowl. I think. Since that's the most recent thing, I think that's the thing we should talk about. The All right, let's hit the Super Bowl. Okay, so let's talk about the biggest thing that happened, was, which is probably the, the foul call at the end, the flag, mm-hmm. the holding call. What do you think about that? I mean, personally, I feel, I mean, a hold is a hold. In, in a game time situation where you know, you know the stakes of the game, you're down by three, you can't, you can't make – any kind of small mistake like that, because uh, if it's if it's called, it's called, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, especially when you don't have a challenge, uh, a challenge play. Yeah, a challenge card uh, to play. Um, those are those are the small mistakes, and hopefully that's something that uh, he can learn from. Uh, I just feel like in those in those situations, you just have to know the situation that you're in, and when you put yourself. In that kind, when you put yourself in that kind of situation, you set yourself up for failure. Um, I remember sometime, I think like right after that play happened, uh, LeBron tweeted about it. He was like, "That play or the hole was not enough to stop him from running." And I'm like, either way, it it's still a hole. At so, the end of the day, it's at, a play. exactly. At the end of the day, the refs call it, and it is what it is. And so that's that's not, that's not anything that uh, he could change. Uh, yeah. Do you do you think that hole was enough to stop his run? No, I think it was a little bit overthrown, and he just didn't have enough speed to go get it. But they, I saw a lot of, um, <laughs> I saw a lot of the interviews after with the Eagles players, and they were they they were actually really professional about it. I was expecting them to be like, "Man, the refs are out of pl- out of pocket and things like that," but nah, they were actually taking it with grace. They were like. Uh, you can't get mad at the refs because at the end of the day, the call's the call. So you just got to live with it and you shouldn't be putting yourself in that situation, which I actually respect a lot. Even though I'm a Cowboys fan and, you know, <laughs> I'm not rocking with Philly, but that, I just, I respected them a lot for it. I must say, as Cowboys, as Cowboys fans, um, you, Seeing the way that these last couple of seasons have ended, you have to be concerned about the future of the team. You know, you see Dak, he's getting he's going down with injury just about every season, and it's a big injury, and he's gotta sit weeks on weeks on weeks. And us Cowboys fans were waiting for him to come back. So my question to you is what or where do you think the future of the Cowboys stands? Oh, that's a tough one because I feel like there has to be change, obviously. Like, we just got a new offensive coordinator. Thankfully, Dan right. Quinn stayed. That was one of my biggest concerns because Dan Quinn was really what helped us, like, get past that little hump mm-hmm. to where we're in real Super Bowl contention. But I feel like there has to be a lot of change. Like, there has we might need to get rid of Zeke and change of somebody else and make Pollard number one. Or get rid of as much as I hate to say, it, get rid of Dak because yeah, I mean he's a little too inconsistent. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like we, you need consistency to win a Super Bowl, and Dak is either playing at the best he's ever played, or he's he's playing a little off. See, and I like Dak. I've I've been a fan of Dak since he came into the league. Uh, I remember I I used to have a I used to have a Dak jersey. But I outgrew it, so you know, had to give it away. Same. <sighs> and um, I mean, I just feel like if Dak, if Dak is gonna have a game where he's out there looking like prime Tom Brady, and then he ha- he has a goal, he has a uh, he goes out there and has another game, and he plays like crap. I mean, I mean, just, that's, that just can't be a part. That just can't be a part of something that we do, you know. Yeah. Like, that's kind of been literally our last playoff run against Brady. He played, oh, my God, he played mm-hmm. phenomenal. But then he crumbled against the <laughs> Niners. <laughs> and the uh, Niners weren't even playing. Their defense wasn't playing that good. It, it was just we couldn't generate anything on offense. You remember the and score our, to that game? Huh? You remember the score to that game? Uh, what was it? 
I know towards the end they kind of pulled ahead, but mm. it was close throughout. And it wasn't until we had some injuries and just Dak was throwing picks. Right. And yeah. Our defense was holding them to three points. Like, they would only get a field goal off of the turnovers. And it was like, come on, bro. The defense is doing third part. You got to do right. yours. So. I feel I feel like I feel like our defense is re- has really been holding it down. And I think that's the stronger part of our team. So I think we should keep I think we should keep our defensive core together, but we might have to change some things in our offense. Yeah, like, because before we were either really hit or miss. Like, our offense was doing really good, but our defense was doing bad. Mm-hmm. Or our offense, or, the, or our defense was really good, but then our offense was struggling. So, and now we were we were kind of finding a balance this season, but then Dak went to play. <laughs> he went to play with our feelings so bad. Yeah, speaking, speaking of strong offense... I think we need to give some kudos to a guy who I feel like deserved the or we're, we're going to talk about a guy who has uh, almost no flaw in his offense. Mr. Patrick Mahomes, uh, uh, the MVP of the NFL uh, for this season. Um, do you think do you think it should have gone to anybody else? Off the top of my head, I can't really see it going to anybody else who. Who would even be in contention other than him? I mean, from what I saw, the other nominee, other nominees included Jalen Hurts and Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen, you know. Mm. And so, I, I, me personally, I feel like those were his only competition. But Patrick Mahomes, that dude is bad. And he had been playing on that. He had been playing on an ankle injury for some time. And so, I feel like for him to be doing what he did uh, with that injury, mm. I think that he's doing really good. Um I feel like uh, Jalen Hurts, he's, he played really good. Don't get me wrong. You know, sure. I hate to say it, but I feel like he wasn't the most valuable player because his team was so good, it just elevated him that much more. Like, mm-hmm. they were still winning without him, although we beat them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel like Pat, without Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs, the Chiefs are nothing. They struggle. Yeah. And, and the fact that he was carrying them – he was carrying them through the injury. It just makes it that much more impactful. And so speaking speaking of Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts, uh, let's take a trip back to the Super Bowl. Uh, the the Chiefs beat the the Eagles 38-35. Um, what was your pick coming out of the Super Bowl? I really thought it could go either way because it really all depended on Mahomes. Like, like right. we said, if he was able to fight through the injury, he would have uh, I felt like the Chiefs would have won, and that's exactly what they did. Mm-hmm. But if um, if the Eagles would have been able to just neutralize him, or if he gets injured, anything, it's it's over, and the Chiefs win. I mean, right. the Eagles win. And they they tried to go for that injury. There was that one play yeah. where they did go for his leg. I feel like it was a few. It was more than one time. I was like, for sure, they really, yeah. They really have. To they really they really wanted to take him out, and I know a lot of times taking out. Uh, Taking out a key piece of somebody's offense uh, is a, a big factor in the outcome of a game. We see that we see that everywhere in every sport: uh, baseball, basketball, everywhere. Um, he has two rings now in five in, seasons. That's insane. Two rings in five seasons. Uh, shoot, did did Brady do that? Did Brady have two rings five seasons? I don't and, know. And, at the know. at the beginning of his career, that like this early on, the success he's had so, so early on is insane. But hold up, before we get into that, I kind of want to go back to the Eagles a little bit. I feel like this was like one of the easiest paths to Super Bowl a team has ever had. You know what I mean? Because their teams, the teams they played, they were either plagued with injuries or they just weren't that good. So, I'll say. I'll say that during the regular season, they probably did have that. They did have that easy road for them. Um, the playoffs, I feel like the playoffs kind of told a different story. I mean, the Giants, everybody knew they were going to beat the Giants. I mean, not really when you think about it. Because like you said, the Giants is the Giants. And the 49ers, to the team that was going to give them the best run for their money, both their quarterbacks get injured. Mm-hmm. They're back up to the backup. And then they're back up to the back to, to the backup gets injured. So then they have to put the injured back up. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? 
Yeah, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, the the 49ers had a record of 13 and 4 though. And in that game where they played for the championship, uh the the uh the 49ers had 83 passing yards to Philadelphia's 121. Yeah, they got ragged all that one line. And then they had 81 rushing yards to Philadelphia's 148. And then in total yards, they had they were 164 to 269. Like when you get when you get dogged on on yards like that, I just feel like it's not that it says something about your team, but it says like you just you just have to make sure that your personnel is in check, you know. Like when you when you suffer a setback, you just have to like make sure that everybody's still prepared, everybody's still moving the way that they know how to. Um and I feel like I feel like after the or with the quarterbacks being injured, they just weren't able to flourish the way that they had been throughout the entire season. Yeah, there's only so much you can do when your core players go down. Like it's kind of over at that point because like say for us, uh I don't know, C D, which is one of our mm-hmm. biggest offensive weapons. Imagine he goes down, God forbid. <sighs> I I pull like we'd be we'd be, <laughs> we'd be in some trouble, yes, man. Because people don't like even the games where he doesn't have the most stats, he does things off the ball that they that just opens up the our entire offense because they have to stick their best defender on him, right? And then it opens everybody else up. So it's just yeah. I feel like CD is one of our best producers on the offense. Whether whether he's making the catch or whether he's going whether he's going for the run or whatever. Uh, I just think I think he's one of our best offensive producers, and he's. I think we should definitely, if we do decide to go for a rebuild, we should definitely keep him as part of our team's core. Yeah, for sure. I got a question for you. Do you think if we would have kept Amari, we could have made like a deeper run? I think we could have, man. I'm I'm still upset that we let go of him, and for nothing in return, literally scraps, table scraps. It was so annoying. It was it was it was a tedious day for all Cowboys fans across the world. Sure. I must say, um, but kind of staying on the topic of the Cowboys' future, what do you, what do you think is like the main piece that we need, like the last piece of the puzzle that needs to come about to really push us into finally making a Super Bowl appearance? To make a Super Bowl appearance for the Cowboys. I must say that a lot, or not a lot, but some things definitely do have to change. Um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that we need to get rid of Dak. But if we were to get rid of Dak, we might have to go out and like make a really big package deal for like another superstar quarterback. Now, the question. The question is, what are teams like? What is what would be a team's asking price for uh, another or for their superstar quarterback? You know, like if we were if we were to go and ask for a guy the caliber of Jalen Hurts or the guy with the caliber of uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, um, I just for those types of players, I don't see them giving up. Like that's their that's their guy, so I don't really see them giving for anything, giving them up. Right, I think that's the, that's the issue. I think it'll have to be like a really big package, you know. Like they they'd have to give up Dak. They'd have to. It's likely they'll have to give up Zeke. Uh, all I know is if they were to give up a package, they better not give up Michael Parsons because that guy the, that's that our, guy is holding down our that defense. That is our guy. We cannot get rid of. We, it is. We need to have him and CD on the team at all costs. Um, I just think, I think that. These draft picks that we have, or we need we need to acquire more draft assets, you know, yeah. for like one of these up and coming guys coming out of college, you know, like Arch Manning, you know, uh, he is signed with Texas, I believe, and so I think uh, once once it comes time for him to or for for a college quarterback to come into the league like him, uh, I think that we need to we need to have we need to make sure that we have the assets required to get a guy who can already come in into the league and produce and can do that for a long time. Yeah, I get that. I kind of got a controversial idea. Let me know what you think about it. Okay, so you know how Stefan Diggs, mm. he 
obviously we got his brother on our, yes. on our team and they've always wanted to play together. So either we try to get Stefan Diggs to lighten the load off of um, off of CD and we stop pursuing OBJ, right? Mm-hmm. And then that helps our whole offense out. Or if we can't get Stefan Diggs, we trade Trayvon Diggs. <laughs> 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 hear me out, hear me out. We trade him for more depth because you can get a pretty good deal out of him. I agree. We yeah. trade we trade both Zeke and Diggs. We can get a nice little something out of that. We definitely could. And um, then just make Pollard our number one guy on the run on the ground. Uh I must say I I, I definitely would have to disagree with the second one. Cause I mean like that's that's kinda like playing a high risk, low reward card. Cause like, you know, you never know how much uh the depth is going to be, you know, that a team is willing to give up. Like you see that and even like when you when you look at guys in the NBA, you know, you have to trade like your big superstars for like younger guys who are still trying to develop and find their way. But you're not finding or you're not getting a key piece to a guy who's like just gonna come in and give you like sixty yards a game. You know, yeah. Or you know, you just you just have to. I just feel like we have to play our cards right if we want to like really get to uh, get to the top of the pyramid. You know, I feel like that's another issue we have is like our management because mm-hmm. Jerry Jones he likes to have his fingers in every pie he can, and I feel like he just needs to let our our coaching and he just needs to trust the people he's hired to manage his team because he. He comes up with some wild ideas, and right. he just kind of needs to take a step back. I, I think, um, I mean, obvious, obviously, to make a move, you'll have to go through your executive, and because he is our executive, you know, you kind of have to like just make sure that he has the approval of it. But I don't, I don't think that he should like be in the discussion. Yeah, you know, like when they're making when they're making that decision, he just he should not be there because, I mean. Don't get me wrong, Jerry Jones has produced some of our best teams um, in the past. But now now we have, or we, well, we still kind of need new management. Uh, and, I mean, I just think if we have, if we have better management, guys who will uh, come in and rate, make the right moves, we'll be, we'll be fine. I just, I just hope we get it right soon, you know. Speaking of management, what, what do you think about Mike or Mike McCarthy? Because I don't know. At first, I really didn't like him because he was just we we didn't do too good. Like in the moments that it ma- like overall our season was all right, I guess. But in the moments that it really mattered, like in important games, he had some very questionable calls. So, but this this season he's been a lot better. So, what do you think about him? Um, I'll say because because he's relatively new. Uh, new. Or, he's been in the league for how long now? Well, not not like new, but like he's new to our our system and what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think either either he's gonna have to adjust to us or we're gonna have to adjust to him. Mm-hmm. And so I just think, and obviously he knows he knows the players that we have better than we know. Uh, quite honestly, and I just think that I think that it's gonna it's gonna take some time. But with the with the right personnel who will fit under the play style that he is asking for, we'll get we'll get into it. Um, I don't think I don't think that we'll be in a struggling place at all uh, anytime soon. It's it's just gonna be a matter of time and a matter of patience with the people and McCarthy. Yeah, I feel like right now it, he, we were adjusting to him, and now things are finally starting to smoothen out. So I feel like. Maybe one or two more years, we'll we'll be set for straight. sure. But it's also a matter of time. It's only a matter of time until big changes happen because Micah got to get paid. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long he got left on his rookie contract. Oh, it's only what his second year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't. It's like CD. Everybody's got to get paid, so it's only a matter of time. But kind of speaking to the future, do you think that? Uh, Patrick Mahomes can, you know, he just won his what second or third MVP? Yeah, second. I believe this is his second MVP. 
Yeah, so he just won his second MVP. Uh, he uh, he just won his second chip. Like, do you think he can kind of catch Tom Brady in a way? Um, because it's his when, it's his second ring in what five six years. Yeah. Um, I think quite honestly, I think he can do it. It just depends on how long or how long he can or decides to play. Um. You know, you see, you see the guys. I mean, some guys are retiring at the age of forty. Uh, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, he just retired at age forty-five. Uh, so it's like when, and he's he's twenty-seven now. So I'm I'm just wondering, will he be able to maintain this kind of or this level of play for another eighteen years? And quite honestly, out of that eighteen years, I think he can win. A minimum of five more championships, uh, as long as they keep they keep him, Kelsey, and those other big core guys that they have uh, on the team, they'll be straight for a, a long, long time. Because when you think of the go, obviously you think of Tom Brady, right. right? The only other person that I think of that can possibly catch him, and that's possibly, is Mahomes because he's super young yeah. right now, and he the level he's playing is insane. I mean. Mahomes and this MVP, it's I, I, quite honestly, I feel like nobody deserved him more. He was first in yards, first in touchdowns. Uh, I mean, or for at least for a quarterback, and that's and that's including uh Jalen Hurts, who was surrounded by incredible we- uh, weapons. AJ Brown, uh, what's his face, Dallas Goddard, yeah, and those those guys are monsters, man. yeah, and to see to to have seen them play uh or match up in the Super Bowl it was that was that was like the pinnacle of of football at least for this season mm-hmm. um now Dallas is on Dak Prescott won the Walter Payton NFL play, NFL man of the year award how do you how do you feel about that uh well he's been through a lot and I kind of I'm happy for him because that's like it just shows what good of a person he is because yeah. He's been through a lot. He has a lot of charities he's set up. Mm-hmm. And I, when I think of a nice guy, he's the first person that comes to mind. Yeah, he, he does. He does. He does a lot during the community. I see, I've seen him around a couple of times. And, I mean, he just, the way he interacts with the people, he's really he's really a good spirit. Uh, I feel like the people would really want him to stay here. Uh, we just got to we just gotta build some consistency. Yeah, I've never heard of anybody speak poorly about Dak. And it's wild that Micah, for Defensive Player of the Year, didn't even get one vote. That's crazy. Criminal. But that wraps up our NFL segment, and we will be back with sports for the NBA. Yo, what's up, KZ and family? Currently enjoying the show? But don't leave us just yet. We'll be right back after this short break. Breaking news, KSBM Radio. Our host will be right back with local and global news. So make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back, KSBM Radio. I'm Doc. I'm, sorry, I'm Jojo. <laughs> and I'm Doc. All right, so we're coming at y'all with some hot, hot news because... Yeah. As we all know, the NBA trade line trade deadline was a little bit ago and it went berserk. Yeah, we the entire the entire league was buzzing at one o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um obviously the first the first real deadline deal that we saw was Kyrie get traded to the Mavericks. Obviously Finally. everybody's excited about it. Of course. Um him and Luca have been producing really well. Uh they won that first game against uh, Kyrie's first game with the Mavs, they won that game against the Clippers, and then they won against the Kings. Sadly, that over that overtime loss against the Kings, uh, that one stung. Yeah, it really did. Especially uh, since it was the first time Kyrie and Luca, Luca played together. To play together. We moved past it. Yeah. So how how do you see the future, or how do you see how do you see our our progress. What what do you think our ceiling is for the rest of the season? Our ceiling's pretty. I don't know. I feel like we could 
possibly make a championship. A little little Dirk against the Heat situation, yeah. underdogs. Because the West just got really competitive. Really, real fast. really competitive. Um, we saw D'Angelo Russell get uh, sent back to L.A. from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That was in a trade that included Russell Westbrook and Mike Conley, along with some <laughs> other key core players, uh, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt. Um, Mo Bamba also got traded back to the Lakers for yes. Pat Bess. Um, and see, this this is something that a lot of people joke about, but um, we've seen it in history. We've seen Shaq f- get traded from the Magic to the Lakers. We've seen Dwight <laughs> Howard get traded from the Magic to the Lakers, and now we have Mo Bamba. I just – and in those two situations, those guys – I mean, Dwight was obviously uh, – he was obviously, like, just uh, – he was a monster when he was in Orlando, but yeah, it didn't – and it, it just didn't change. Like, he brought that same persona, that same mentality from Orlando to L.A. And same with Shaq. Uh, now, Mo is not, Mo isn't, like, uh, an absolute dominant force. Uh, but do you think that he can become one? Like, do you think this center's getting traded from the Magic to the Lakers theory is a real thing? Mm, I mean, I don't know. Because when you play with LeBron, anything, ha- anything can happen. Because right. he's obviously just going to set you up. And he's going to make you, as long as you're playing with LeBron, he's going to make you a better player because he has all this knowledge and he can teach you all the little things that other people, unless they're like a vet too, they're not really going to know. Mm-hmm. And especially since uh, he's played with such great big men in the past, like Chris Bosh and, yeah, so um, I think, I, don't, I seriously doubt it'll be like the level of Shaq, because he was already a, he, he was, was already a beast dominant. in, uh, he was already a beast in Orlando, and just coming to the Lakers would made him elevate that much more. But yeah. I don't think it'll be. And he got a shot level. to play with the late great Kobe Bryant. Um, I mean, right. who was who was uh, he was he was great since he came in the league, and you know, it was to see two of the greatest talents in basketball play together. I mean, that was that was great. Uh, speaking of great talent in the NBA playing together, the whoa, the NBA absolutely busted at one o'clock in the morning, and when we saw KD, uh, Kevin Durant get traded from the Brooklyn Nets to the Phoenix Suns, playing with Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre. Ayton. Bro, I was not expecting Dude, that. To I was, happen. I was so angry, like. I was, I think I was playing, I was playing 2K at the moment, right? <laughs> and I saw the notification come up on my phone. And I was 20 minutes late. Like, the trade happened 20 minutes before I saw it. And I was, I was like, the Suns have traded Macau Bridges, Cameron Johnson, Jay Crowder, and four future first-round picks for Kevin Durant and TJ Warren. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> how, how do you do that? Like, I mean, Macau Bridges and Cameron Johnson, they're, they're phenomenal players. I mean, they're not, they're not superstars, but... In the role that they play, they are they suc- they excel, and I just it's it's sad to see them go, but I'm glad that they're on a team that is the Nets, you know, because yeah. they're they're bringing that. Now that they're away from Kyrie and KD, they kind of give me that 2019 uh, Nets vibe. They're kind of they went from uh, championship contention to rebuild more real quick. Real quick, but that team, that team is still going to be good. They've got Dinwiddie, uh, Ka- uh, Cameron Johnson, as we just said, Macau, uh, uh, Doe, and Nick Claxton. You know, I think that's that's still a really good team. I mean, they won't win a champion. They, I mean, they could be a dark horse contender, but uh, I don't know. If because they'll get there, I'm not sure. They have the depth too, though. They definitely have depth, that's for sure. But I don't know. They need that one guy to elevate them just that much more. And Ben Simmons definitely ain't finna do that. Hey, yeah. but Macau, Macau had forty five last night against the. Um, he did. Yeah, he had forty five against the Clippers, I believe. But it's insane because, especially when you consider what Gobert got traded for, that was one of the biggest robberies I've ever I've ever seen in my entire life. I must agree because he he got traded for Patrick Beverly. Walter Keister, Malik Beasley, Leonardo Balmo, I don't know, just a bunch of randoms and four <laughs> first round picks <laughs> yeah. and a trade swap. Like, they got so much more for someone who's not nearly at the level that uh, KD is at. And he's an all time player. 
Yeah. Speaking speaking of all-time players, I must ask you, who is the GOAT? I mean, LeBron, he did just pass Kareem. Okay. I understand mm-hmm. that. But Jordan, <laughs> he's just, I don't think it's going to be very difficult. Like, I know that's one of the biggest milestones ever. Number one right. scoring all time. All time. 38,000 points and counting. But I don't know. Jordan is just, he's untouchable. He's black Jesus. <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. I don't know. They, what do you think? So you, you, LeBron is your goal. Right? LeBron LeBron is my goal. All right. Give me your reasoning. All right. So let's, let's look at it this way. You have 19 all-star appearances. Okay. 18 All-NBA team appearances, first, second, third team, whatever. Six times on the All-Defense, four Finals MVPs, four regular season MVPs, four NBA championships. You're the all-time leading scorer. You are top 10 in points, rebounds, assists, and steals. Like, and then up against five MVPs, uh, 11-time All-NBA Six, six uh, finals MVP, nine time all defense, six time NBA champions, four time all star. Uh, but the guy who's he's fifth in no, but in the finals. But LeBron, ha- LeBron has, um, he's been on a, le- he had been on the level of NBA finals every year, you know, since since he went um, with the Heat, I believe. Yeah, since he went with the Heat in 2011. The Heat in 2011. Heat in 2012, Heat in 2013, Heat in 2014, the Cavs in 2015, Cavs in 2016, Cavs in 2017, Cavs in 2018. Only time he did not make the finals was in 2019. Now it's because he was with that young Lakers team and he got hurt in the middle of the season. And when they were when he got hurt, they were actually doing good. But then we we, we just had to count on the young Lakers, Lonzo Ball, uh, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma. We had to depend on those guys to uh, elevate the team and keep them at the high stature that they have been playing in. But then all of them got hurt. So then they definitely didn't make the playoffs. And they had to depend on guys like freaking uh, Tony Snell. They had to depend on... They had to, and Tony Snell's not a bad player. But he's not like... He's not a guy who's going to come out and give you 20, ni- 20 points a night. And then he made it again in 2020, that bubble season. Um, and he won that second year with the Lakers with Anthony Davis. Um and so that gave him his fourth ring. And I just I just think that with the accolades that he has, with the records he has, with the amount of time that he's still going to play, because he's, he's obviously not done. He said that himself. He's not done. So I just feel like his longevity puts him above the rest of the NBA, you know. I get what you mean by that, because obviously he's, he's been playing 20-plus years, or he's going to play 20-plus years. And I will admit that the the argument against him that he he lost however many games in the finals, he was playing against one of the greatest teams ever assembled in the Golden State Warriors. But when you think about just dominance, what was that six year span where he absolutely yeah, crushed the NBA? Yeah, My, he, Jordan, yeah, Jordan, Jordan like we're talking about seasons. He dominated. They, the NBA was his child. He he could do whatever he wanted with them. Jordan, I mean, the old LeBron never had a period like that. LeBron did have that period, and that that period was his time in in Miami, or the time from like right before he left Cleveland to the time that he went to Miami. That that was his time where he absolutely dogged the NBA. You know, I mean, and he w- he would just run through guys. I mean, he ran. He didn't. I wouldn't say he ran through the Mavericks in 2011, obviously, because that was the year that they won. Mm-hmm. But 2012, yes, 2013, those were his years. And same, same with 2014. That was his year too. 2015, 2016 was definitely his year. He averaged 30 points. And even now, it still feels like the NBA is still his league. I mean, like mm-hmm. when you look at the NBA, the first person that the first person that you're gonna think of, if it's it's, it's LeBron. If it's not LeBron, it's probably Giannis or KD or Steph Curry, somebody like that. He's definitely but the face of the NFL. I mean, of the NBA. For but sure. But he doesn't, the NBA isn't his anymore. There's a lot of guys that is, can be up for grabs. Who, who does the NBA belong to then? I don't know. 
Like mm-hmm. current day, who do you think the NBA belongs to? Right now, a lot. It's gonna be a lot of. It's gonna be an un, unpopular opinion, but I think Jokic. Jokic. <gasps> I can't say that. Bro, he's having a I can't all, say that. He's been having all-time seasons for now, like two, three seasons now. Right. Uh, and he's averaging a triple-double now. Um, mm-hmm. But I just, I can't, I, I think he's a phenomenal player. But the back, and he's gotten back-to-back MVPs uh, for the last two seasons. And apparently it's, it's looking like he could earn his third this year. Um However, you're telling me you're gonna pick Jokic. I mean, you're gonna pick LeBron over Jokic. I pick I pick Giannis over Jokic. Oh, okay, that makes me. And sense. I think I think Giannis I think Giannis is one of the top one of the top guys in any starting five in the league. Now, spe- speaking of starting fives, give me your all time starting five. Like who I think is best at each position, or who. I think would be the best starting five. Like, nobody can beat them. Best starting five, nobody can beat them. Okay. Point guard, this is going to be really, like, you're going to be like, whoa. Steph Curry. Okay. (laughs) I'll take that. I'll take that. Because I know Magic Johnson, like, all time, I have Magic Johnson above Steph Curry. But Steph Curry, like, who's guarding him? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Then at two, Jordan. Mm Mm-hmm. Three. Oh, it's a tough one between. Nah, give me, give me LeBron, give me LeBron, and then number four, give me Kevin Durant, and then five, give me Shaq. I'll take, uh, I'll take. Kurt. Okay, I'm gonna give you a starting five, uh, my starting five, and I'll give you, I'll give you one to beat yours. I've got Curry. For my starting five, I got Curry. I've got Kobe. MJ, LeBron, and Shaq. Now to beat to beat MJ, your starting five. Wait, hold on, hold on. MJ at the three? Yes, MJ at the three. He's six six. Six six trying to guard LeBron. He can and we do talk, it. we talking about everybody in their primes, right? Yeah, everybody talking, in their prime. You Bro, think LeBron but, is getting stopped by Jordan when he's like two fifty, running full speed, full athleticism? But he's then you have to understand stomped. you have to understand the defensive IQ of Michael Jordan, though. Okay. I mean, he's and think he, about the offensive IQ of LeBron. <laughs> but see, Le- especially with when paired with Curry, Shaq, like you toss the ball. You, wait, okay, wait. Who's your five? No, oh, okay. My starting my starting five to beat your starting five because mm-hmm. you have you have Curry, Kobe, LeBron, no, I KD. Had Jordan. Oh, you had Jordan? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then I give you Magic. No, okay. I give you AI. I AI, mean, oh, yes. you wild! A- what bro, boy? AI is mm. pro- AI is probably one of the best defensive guards like to ever play. Like, okay, honestly. I will admit that, but he he's not stopping. <laughs> he's not stopping Curry, <laughs> but, but stopping he can still Curry. guard him. That's that's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. He can guard him as long as he can guard him and not let not let him put fifty on his head. Okay. I I take that. Okay. So I give you AI. I give you. Uh, you said Kobe. Jordan. You had Co- no, you had Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I gave you Kobe, uh, Larry Bird, Ooh. Bill Russell, <laughs> and Tim Duncan. No. <laughs> yes, listen, Larry Bird. Larry Bird is he's like a sleeper. Like a lot you of people think sleep Larry on Larry Bird, Bird. Is stopping six, eight, two hundred, three hundred pound jo- uh, LeBron when I he's mean, coming at his chest. I mean, but let's oh, let's be honest. Yeah, the Wow. He may not stop him, but Larry's offensive IQ, like the moves that Larry could put on LeBron, like come on now. Wait, you had Bill Russell guarding Kevin Durant? You this man is insane. Okay, I didn't think about this that. This man is insane. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> Bro, you <laughs> But listen, listen, listen. Bill Russell cuz I mean, uh, it's not that it's not that Bill Russell is a defensive liability, but he's he's more of an in the paint guy. And I mean, on the perimeter, guarding Kevin Durant, he is definitely a defensive liability. I mean, six six eleven on six eleven. I mean, as long as bro, Kevin Durant is not six eleven. Okay, he's six ten. He's, he's like seven foot five. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not that tall. <laughs> no, he most definitely lies about his height because he is way taller than seven foot. For sure. Um, but either I, way, I got my guys over here. 
I, I got my guys. I got LeBron as the GOAT, quite honestly. Um, okay, well, we're going to have to agree to disagree because there's no way Jordan, I mean, LeBron is beating Jordan. Yeah, but, whatever. Okay. Speaking of LeBron, um, <laughs> let's talk about the All-Star game, which he was just named the All-Star captain for the Western Conference. Mm-hmm. Um, LeBron, or his starters will be, uh, or for the West, they are himself. They have Curry, uh, Zion Williamson, Luka Doncic, and Nikola Jokic. Now, um, because Curry and Zion were plagued with injury, they uh, have replaced them with uh, John Morant and Lori Markinen. I can get behind Jaw. Lori Markinen? <laughs> Huh? Isn't he averaging like less than twenty points a game? No, Lori Markinen is averaging almost twenty five points a game and almost nine rebounds. And this this but is that's, actually that's his, basically it. That's all. I must had. I must say, okay. Well, the Jazz the Jazz were in a really good spot to begin the season, but um, they've kind of fallen off. I believe they're the eleventh seed now, which is kind of it's kind of mediocre, but at the same time, not really. I um, mean, for who they have, they should be all right, most definitely. Uh, do you have who all is on the bench for or the reserves for the Western Conference? The reserves consist of Lori or Shay, Shay, Shea, how do you pronounce the last name? Shay Gilgis. Gilgis, Gilgis Alexander. Alexander. I know that uh, Shaq and Charles Barkley like could call him uh, <laughs> Gilchrist Alexander. Yeah. Uh, Paul George, Dame Lillard, Sabonis. Jerry Jackson Jr., Anthony Edwards, and De'Aaron Fox. I, I still want to say I'm thrown by Jaron Jackson being named an All Star. Um, yeah, I, I don't. He he's been playing good, I guess, but I don't know to making him All Star. Nah, I, I think know. and see guys guys like Devin Booker, Anthony Davis, they could have made the game over him, you know, most definitely. But they gave That's they gave Jaron Jackson a spot. Now I want to say I want to say it's only because the Grizzlies are second. Western Conference. That yeah. definitely has to do with it, but I feel like so many other guys could have been picked above him. I right. mean, I guess not so many, but there were definitely better options. For and sure. the East, they have who do they have? Uh, the East has Giannis, KD, Jason Tatum, Kyrie Irving, Donovan Mitchell, Joel Embiid, Bam Adebayo, Jalen Brown, DeMar DeRozan, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, Julius Randle, and Pascal Siakam. Um, I, I, cause I was talking about this with my friends the other day. Uh, they were talking about how Pascal Siakam was not snubbed from the All-Star game initially because um, the Raptors are playing quite mediocre. Um, I must say that he's a- because he's averaging like 25 a game, uh, eight rebounds, uh, he, he should have made it. I mean, those are All-Star numbers. A lot of these guys who are in the All-Star game are averaging those numbers. So I just But I feel like there's so much more competition in his position that – True. I feel like it, it wasn't a snub because they're just better guys above him, and they rightfully so got picked above him. I still see for the East, uh, James Harden and Trey Young didn't make the All Star game, but Drew Holiday and Tyrese Halliburton did. How do, how do you think? Do you that think they is were criminal? That most like James Harden, he hasn't been doing what he used to, but he's still very much an All Star. Yeah, I gotta say he's really it. productive. Yeah. Um, do you think team records should be considered? When choosing um, All-Stars? I don't know. I feel like it definitely has something to do with it, but I it shouldn't be one of the things they go to the most because that's what the All-Star game is for, to celebrate individual players. And uh, it shouldn't – it should be celebrating the player and not the team because the team is going to be celebrated when they make it to the playoffs or – how right. their season was, and that's going to be how their uh, what's the word? The outcome. No, it's they're they're going to be judged on how well they did. Mm. So, all right. Well, <coughs> this has been our show. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook at KSBM Radio, uh, Twitter at KSBM underscore TVT, Instagram and TikTok at ksbmradio.tvt and you can catch us here on Twitch and on Anchor and Spotify.
I'm Jojo. And I'm Doc. And, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>